Stayallday.com. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you're expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one book, one show, one daily master class that is called Work on Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today we are going to talk racism. We're just going to talk racism as a general topic here today so I can put my thoughts on the record just on this, this very topic. Because after I did the four-part series where I destroyed the concept of anti-racism or anti-racism, uh, there have been some questions and then when I use also just using social media and I the type of stuff that gets thrown around on social media every single day it seems like we're more in the 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 racism Olympics these days it's just everybody is talking about racism this thing is racism happening this thing's happening back in episode 1731 which was about uh, a little over two months ago I answered this question is racism on the rise because this is something that I jumped into a room on Clubhouse and wasn't too many people in the room, maybe 12, 15 people in the room. They invited me in to speak and that's the first thing they asked me. Do you feel like there's more racism going on now than back in the day? And when I started answering the question with the points that I gave in episode 1731, there are people, black people actually getting mad at me because I was not claiming that there's more racism going on right now. What I think, and I shared in episode 1731, today's a different angle, but just generally, I just feel like there are more people talking about racism. Everybody's just talking about it. And today I'm gonna to add to that conversation because I'm gonna talk about it. What are my general feelings just about the concept of racism in general as a black man living in the United States? What are my general feelings about racism? I'm gonna put all of that on the record here today. So before I get into this, let me remind you or inform you that I have a text message number that I want you to text me at and tell me the most valuable insight nugget uh, if you have a question challenge or whether it's around this topic or something else i want you to text me and my number is 305-384-6894 most valuable thing you got from today you got a question challenge um, whether again related to this topic or something else and you're going to be on an exclusive list where you're going to get some things that you won't get anywhere else from me again my number 305-384-6894 Let's get right into our points. Again, the topic today, I'm just talking generally how I feel about the very concept of racism and that is such a big hot topic issue these days. Point number one, let's get the definition of racism because this gets, it gets thrown around so often. I think we all need to get on the same page as to what exactly racism is if we're gonna talk about it. So everything that I'm saying here today is based on the definition that I'm about to share with you, okay? so. Because one thing, before I give this definition, one thing that I've seen so many people do, and I've heard so many people say is say, well, it's, they say something like, well, it's obvious that this person is racist, or it's obvious that this outcome is racist, or it's obvious that these type of people are racist, or they were racist, or if this person says this or does this, then they have to be racist. And that's always baffled me because I've always been clear as to what the definition is. So I'm gonna put this definition on the table right now so that everyone knows what definition I'm speaking from today. Definition of racism, quote, the belief that different races possess distinct characters, abilities, or qualities, especially so as to distinguish them as inferior or superior to one another. Close quote. Let me say that definition one more time because I wanna make sure nobody is confused. Quote, definition of racism, quote, the belief that different races possess distinct characteristics, abilities, or qualities, especially so as to distinguish them as inferior or superior to one another. Close quote. All right, what's the key word in that definition? The key word in that definition is belief. Because aside from a person admitting, unless somebody comes to you, looks you in your face, and says to you, hey, Mike, hey, Dre, hey, Lisa, hey, Michelle, I am racist or they say something that fits this definition. They say, I believe that uh, Latin people are superior to white people, or I believe black people are inferior to uh, Asians. Unless someone says that specifically, then we can't just go around and assume or apply the label of racism to that person. 
aside from someone admitting it, you can't really prove racism. Now, if Mr. Kendi, who wrote the anti-racism book, if he agreed with what I just said, well, his book never would have came out because there's no way you can label something as racist based on that definition. This is the very definition of racism as defined by the dictionary. This is the, the Google dictionary definition and maybe different def dictionaries throw different things out there. Maybe I should look up some other definitions here while I'm talking to you. So let's see if we can find some, some other definitions, see what we come up with. So the Google definition, prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against a person or people on the basis of their membership in a particular race, racial or ethnic group, typically one that is a minority or marginalized. And then the second definition is the one that I just shared with you. So they have a noun definition, then they have a kind of a secondary definition. That's the one that I just gave you. So prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism is what Google says, directed against people on the basis of their membership in a particular group, typically one that is a minority or marginalized. So Google is kind of, they threw this second part of this definition, typically one that's a minority or marginalized. They kind of threw this in there, which kind of, I don't even like this extra part they put in the definition because it's basically saying that if a group is minority or marginalized, that they can't be racist. It can't be racism because you're not, if you have some type of prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism against a group that is not minority and is not marginalized, then I guess it's not defined as racism. I disagree with that. I think a, a person from a minority group can be racist against the people in a majority group. It's still racism. If you're prejudiced or discriminatory against them because of that, that is still racism. But Google has kind of kind of jumped into a little bit of a little bit of wokeness here with this this new definition that they've added. This was not here the last time I looked it up, by the way. Let's see what Merriam-Webster says because this is the dictionary that. Uh, when I work with book publishers, they like to use the Merriam-Webster dictionary. They didn't even like to use the Google one. So the racism definition in Merriam-Webster says, a belief that race is a fundamental determinant of human traits and capacities and that racial differences produce an inherent superiority of a particular race. Now, I like this definition. Now, I want you to understand from what I just read, the key word in this definition is the same as the key word in the one I already gave you, belief. It's racism if you believe that race is a fundamental determinant of traits and that the differences in race produce an inherent superiority of a particular race. But it's a belief. So how can you assign racism to another person without knowing their beliefs? Unless they told you, unless you ask them, hey, do you believe that this group is better than this group because of their color? I've never heard anybody. Very few people have I ever even heard of saying something like that or admitting to something like that or agreeing to something like that. Very few. But people go around assigning this thing all the time, like I talked about in episode 1731. So the key word is belief. So aside from someone admitting it, which I've heard very few do so, racism cannot be proved, but it very well can be accused. And that was, again, what I was talking about back in episode 1731, when these people uh, in this clubhouse room were just just so gung-ho on just assigning racism to as many things as they could. And the examples that they gave in there were uh, hilarious and ridiculous to me. You go listen to the episode yourself and you can hear as I share some of those back to you. So since racism is based on a belief and no human being, not me, you, or anyone else, is capable of reading the minds of other people, where do we get this from? See, the main trouble with the racism accusation culture that we're in right now is a ton of it being thrown around by everybody these days. It's not everybody, but a lot of people. Is that everybody's doing it, as I have it, everyone, quote unquote everyone. All right, just semantics there. And it's all based on a perspective of the accuser, which is fine. If that's your perspective that somebody's racist, I suppose that's fine if that's how you feel. The thing is, anybody can throw it out there. And when anybody can just throw out this accusation, this is the kind of accusation, this is not a, a tongue-in-cheek type of, type of accusation. There are people losing their jobs. There are people who are getting canceled from careers. There are people who are getting kicked out of schools. There are people who are getting canceled from opportunities based on these accusations of racism that are getting thrown around very flippantly. And anybody can just throw these things around. And this is causing, this is leading to this whole you know, cancel culture situation that we have going on right now in America. Everybody's trying to cancel everyone else. Like I talked about in episode 1755, the scary truth about cancel culture about a month and 10 days ago. So make sure you go check that episode out if you haven't heard it yet. This is kind of like the Salem witch trials all over again. 
If y'all don't know what the Salem witch trials were, this was back in a time when people were actually accusing women, mostly, mostly women, of being witches. No, like, like a witch, like that rides around on a broomstick, like from out of the, like out of the fairy tales, yes. There were actual humans being accused of being witches, and in Salem, Massachusetts, what happened, it became, it kind of became like a, a craze that anyone who got accused of being a witch, whether they, if they admitted it, then they got burned at the stake, killed by a fire. And if they denied it, then they would say, okay, well, you denied it, that means you're definitely a witch. And they got burned at the stake. And a bunch of people got killed off of these accusations of accusing people of being witches in this time, in this time, because it was just a craze about it. It's the same thing happening with racism now. We're not burning people at the stake, but we're canceling them at the, we're canceling them at the smartphone now. So it's burned at the stake, now it's canceled at the smartphone. How can you prove that you're not racist? <laughs> you had to, the only way someone could not get burned at the stake, they had to prove that they weren't a witch. Well, how can you prove a negative? You pretty much can't. From what I see, the only way anyone can prove that they're not racist is by doing what the race hustlers do or doing what the race hustlers tell you to do. And these, the race hustlers are the people who make their money by going around making these, leveling these racism accusations against companies, against countries, against organizations, and against people. This is their very job, is throwing racism at anyone and anybody, and the person could even be of the race that they are. So a black person could accuse another black person of being racist if that other black person doesn't have the right ideas or they're not following the race hustlers uh, preconceived ideas of what they need to be doing, such as Mr. Kendi with his anti-racism book. He laid out, all right, if you are not doing these things and you don't share these beliefs, you are racist. He laid that out right in the, the thesis of his book. And this is a hustle. It is all a race hustle because these people make money doing this. All right, they make their money from doing this and there's plenty of money to go around because they are leveraging the they're leveraging the guilt of a bunch of scared white people who don't want to have the mob against them. They don't want to be accused of being a witch. They don't want to be accused of being racist. So because of their guilt, they are co-signing this bullshit that a lot of these race hustlers are throwing out here. So this is, this is an excellent hustle. As I said in the anti-racism series, I'm not knocking any of these people's hustle. I'm just pointing out what their hustle is so you can maybe save yourself from getting hustled. Moving on to point number two. Today's topic, we're talking how I feel about racism. So I made it clear what the definition is, and I made it clear that the key word of definition is, is belief, and you can't really prove another person's beliefs. So the whole concept of accusing someone of racism is bullshit just on that alone. But let's continue. Let's talk about it a little bit more. Question number two, or point number two, rather, is a, is a question. Because whenever I bring up a topic like this, especially around a black person, because there are a lot of black people who have been so caught up in this whirlwind of accusing other people of racism, uh, assuming, not even assuming, that's, that's a better word, accepting that they, as black people, are victims in America just because. Uh, and there are people who I know, like, love, and trust who have told me directly that they feel like they are victims just because they are black living in America. And these are people who are 30, 40, 50, 60 years old saying that they feel like they're victims. I'm like, I've never heard this person say this ever before, but now that this is the wave, now they feel like they're victims. They've been properly indoctrinated by these race hustlers that, oh, you know what? You've been living your life for 35 years, but because of these things I'm gonna point out right now, you know what? You should see yourself as a victim. And they bought it. They have bought into these things. Uh, very interesting to me is the best word that I can use to describe it. And again, I'm not mad at them. I'm not, I don't even try to change their minds. I just find it interesting. Then I turn on this mic and we talk about it. So the question is, actually, before I get to the question, some of these same people, when I share with them, listen, I am not a victim. You are not going to convince me that I'm a victim. You're not going to tell me that I'm a victim and you are not going to I try to demonize me or make me seem I am wrong in some way because I don't agree with being a victim. That's fucking ridiculous. And I tell these people in these exact words what I just told you. And some of them will try to reason with me. As I just told you in yesterday's episode, when you get some balls in life, people are going to try to reason with you and talk you out of doing what you're doing because it's going against the grain. People will say things to me like, well, look, Drake, don't you understand that you no know, 400 years of slavery? Don't you understand that you no know, there were Jim Crow laws? Don't you understand that there's all these systemic things in place? Again, all these things that people never talked about until the last few years when we got this whole wave of wokeness. Now, everybody, everybody who's a person of color wants to compete against who's more of a victim. We got the emotional Olympics, we got the victimhood Olympics going on. And people will say to me, say things to me like, 
Um, don't you get profiled? Have you ever been profiled? Have you ever had a white person prejudge you? Have you ever had someone look at you differently based on your appearance? And they'll ask me these questions. And I'll say, well, again, we got to go back to our definition of racism. The reason I gave you that from the very beginning, I can't read another person's mind. So do I feel like somebody might be profiling me? Has that ever happened? Of course. Do I feel like anyone's ever prejudged me based on my appearance? Of course. Do I feel like anyone's looking at me differently because they didn't expect to see a black guy and a black guy came? Of course, yes. Do I believe that these things have ever happened because of my race and my appearance? I would say yes. Now, I don't know what the thoughts were in the head of these people. This is just my perception, okay? But I'm not accusing them of anything based on it. So let me make sure I'm being clear here. Yes, I have seen it and I believe that's the reason, but I'm not calling them racist because of it. Maybe they were just surprised. Maybe they didn't know. Maybe they were just expecting one thing and got a different thing. Does not make them racist. It just means maybe they got something different than what they were expecting. And I don't know. Again, this is my perception. I can't go into another person's head and tell you what they're thinking. Now, another thing people ask, so have you ever noticed anyone any microaggressions that people have. And this is, a, this is a new one. Microaggressions has come out over the last four or five years. A microaggression would be maybe, um, I remember when I was in Philadelphia about four or five years ago, one of my trips to Philly, and I went to a Whole Foods up there and I was trying to order a sandwich at, you know, like the little deli meat stands where they got the workers back there and you, you tell them what you want and they make the sandwich right there in front of you. And I remember there was this white girl working there at the counter and it seemed like Again, I don't, I can't read the woman's mind, but it seemed like she was trying to not acknowledge me and she was trying to help other people instead of helping me when I was clearly the next person in line. And that you could say it was a microaggression, but I didn't allow it to stop me from getting my sandwich. I forcefully, I got a little bit aggressive, not in a physical way, but in a, a verbal way, in an energy way, and let her know, yo, I'm next in line, made her acknowledge me and she made my sandwich right there in front of me. But you could say that's an example of a microaggression. Or maybe somebody, uh, I've been in an elevator before. I remember I was in an elevator once in my building, a different building than the one I live in now, years ago, and there was two women already in the elevator. And both of them were white. Now I get in the elevator, I'm black. This one woman, the floor, the elevator stops at a certain floor. This one woman, an older woman, she's starting to get off the elevator. She looks directly at the other woman and says, have a nice day, and said it in a kind of exaggerated way and purposely didn't acknowledge me and then she walks off the elevator could we consider that a microaggression sure but those are the kind of things i laugh at that kind of stuff because personally i don't respect microaggressions I, i'm a a man i'm a heterosexual male i'm attracted to women i believe in masculinity i do not acknowledge microaggressions i may notice a microaggression but i i can laugh those kind of things off i remember those because i remember it happening but does that bother me no do I consider that racist? No. Do I feel like a victim because of it? No. Is that something I will put in some article to tell people, hey, here's why you're a victim in America? Hell fucking no. Now, do I believe that those are because of my race? Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. Maybe the woman at the Whole Foods counter just didn't like men. Maybe she had a bad experience with him. Maybe her boyfriend cheated on her the night before. She just didn't want to deal with any men. Maybe this woman in the elevator just wasn't used to seeing black guys. Who the hell knows? And honestly, who the fuck cares? Is there a way to know for sure besides asking the person? No, there's no way I will ever know why these things happen. Again, only I noticed them. Maybe they didn't even happen and it was just my ego noticing these things and it wasn't even what actually took place. The key question then is not any of these. Here's the key question to both of these situations that I just shared and any other microaggressions or prejudices or people doing anything where they're profiling or maybe looking at me different or I think they're looking at me different. Here's the key question to all of these things that I'm saying, do I give a fuck? The answer is no. Most of the time, I do not. Because I personally, as I just told you, I don't respect microaggressions. I respect macroaggressions. I respect directness. So if someone's trying to be passive aggressive with me, then I get direct with them. If someone's being micro with me, then I get macro with them. That's just the way that I operate. Now, am I telling you that that makes you wrong for caring about someone showing you microaggression? Or if you feel like you've been profiled or you feel like someone's prejudiced against you or you feel like someone's looking at you funny because you're black, do I, am I saying that that makes you wrong because you don't do things the way that I do them? No, I'm not saying that. You can see things the way that you want to see things because we all have a unique set of circumstances from, from which we see things. We have different perspectives. We're all unique. If we all saw things the same way, this life would be pretty fucking boring and I wouldn't have this show because you would already have all these ideas and I wouldn't need to say them because you're thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. So I'm glad that we're different, okay? 
Some of you who are listening to me right now, you have had situations that colored your perspective in such a way that you are super sensitive to this stuff. Maybe you've had someone show you some serious macro aggression and you figured out it was because of race. Maybe you were even able to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And because of that, you look at things way differently by being a person of color. Or maybe you're white and you look at things differently because you know you're not racist, but you're hypersensitive to making sure you don't look racist. Maybe that's how you operate because of your lived experience. I am not challenging that. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have that perspective because we are all unique. Again, we all have different perspectives and that could lead any one of us to be very sensitive to something because we've experienced it in real life on a real level. Not a bullshit micro passive level, but a serious direct macro level. But other people have not. So the question of the topic, though, is this. Do I do I not give a fuck about macroaggressions or about you know, somebody being prejudiced or somebody maybe having a little bit of racism within them? Who the hell knows? Do I not care about these things because maybe because, oh, Dre, you've created a certain level. I had somebody even accuse me of this. I have mul actually multiple people accuse me of this. They say, well, Dre, you're able to say these things about race and you know, not give a fuck and not care and only think about it from your perspective because you've created a certain level of success. So you're in this, this bubble where you don't really have to care about it because it's not really directly affecting you that much. Is that the case? Because I have you know, a lot of positive relationships with people who are not black or how could I you know say? I don't know <laughs> because my experience is only my experience. So if you're in a situation that's different from mine and you feel marginalized and you feel you're being overlooked or you feel you are underprivileged or you feel that racism is just holding you back and making you a victim through the fact of being your color or living in America or being female or whatever, I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong. I'm just speaking from my personal experience and my personal perspective and I'm explaining this in such a way that hopefully you understand that the way that I see, the way that I look at things is not based on, oh, it's because you've done this and you've done this, you've done this. That's why you can look at things this way. No, y'all got, you got it backwards. The reason that I can look at things the way, the reason that I'm, let me back up. The reason that I have done the things that I've done and be able to achieve the things that I've achieved is because of the way I look at things. See, you got to make sure you're not putting the chicken before the egg. All right, I'm flipping the situation for you. See, I'm not able to look at microaggressions or what some of you would consider prejudice or those situations that I gave you, I'm not able to look at those and laugh them off and say, well, fuck those people because I've created a certain level of success. No, I've created the success because I can look at those things and laugh them off. Like, I don't care about those things. I don't register micro. I don't register passive. I register direct. And I will, I'm an example of it. I live the example that I want to see. So that's the reason why I can look at it that way. So if you flip it around and get some balls, like we talked about in yesterday's episode, you will be able to do the exact same thing. So I'm not telling you this from some high perch, telling you why you're wrong. I'm telling you how you can flip it just by changing the way that you look at situations. Moving on to point number three. Today's topic, once again, is we're just talking about racism, how I feel about racism, where I see it, and just everybody talking about it and everyone accusing everyone else of it. Number three, here's what I think of all of this. I mean, I've already told you all that, but here's an even bigger, bigger picture. Are there bad people out there in the world? Yes, of all colors, of all races, of all genders, of all sexual orientations. There are bad people in every group. There is no group that's all good people. There's no group that's all bad people. And by my judgment and yours too, I think you probably agree with that. But what other people are thinking, first of all, is impossible for me to know. And secondly, even if I did know what another person was thinking, it's not my business. I don't really care what another person is thinking. I told you many episodes ago, one of the keys to my focus is I don't pay too much attention to what other people are doing. I don't really give a damn what other people are doing. I don't care what other people are thinking. I don't care what a bunch of other people got going on. I don't care what other people are you know, saying. I pay attention to what I'm doing. I focus on what I got going on. And if someone happens to insert themselves in what I got going on, now you have my attention. But other than that, I don't really pay that much attention to other people's shit, whatever that shit happens to be, unless it somehow involves me. Their thoughts are not my business. There are no police for thoughts. Uh, you, can't, there's no, you can't call the cops on somebody for what they're thinking. Okay? More importantly, the more a person knows 
of their own ability to create an outcome, any outcome in life, the less that person, I'm talking about you here in case you didn't notice, the less that person will pay attention to externalities and their possible effects on your life. Let me say that one more time. The more you feel capable of creating the outcomes that you want in your life through your own energy and your own actions, the less you will care about what anybody else is saying, doing, or what you think they're thinking. Because you don't know what another person's thinking. You can only think what they're thinking. When you know you can make things happen on your own, guess how much you care about what other people have to say or what other people might be thinking or what other people might be thinking about you. You don't care because they don't matter. You don't even consider these things. Because your success is going to be created either way. Whether somebody is showing you a microaggression or someone's rolling their eyes because you're black or someone doesn't like you living where they live or someone has a problem with whatever about you. If you know you can create your own success, what does it matter what they think? Well, it's a trick question. It doesn't. It doesn't. And this is why it gets me. It, uh, it's interesting to me. I'll just keep using that word. That's why it's interesting to me when I see people getting so worked up over what they consider to be, well, this is racist and that person's racist and what this person said is racist and this and that. I'm like, listen, if you can create your own success and do your own thing, even if that person is racist, so what? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? How can you change the way that they're looking at things? How can you change their mindset if you believe they're racist, which is based on a belief? So if you believe that you know their beliefs, what are you going to do? And last I checked, we couldn't do anything to alter another person's thinking or their words and for the most part, not even their actions. I told you in episode 1378, racism is legal and a bunch of other truths of life that you need to accept. Again, that's episode 1378. If you haven't listened to it, and mind you, that episode came out way before all this social justice woke shit. Because this is something that I've been talking about and thinking about way before it was a wave. Just in case anybody was wondering, did I just talk about that because it was, it was popular in the moment? No, I've been on this. I observe, and this is what I've observed in life. The less a person feels in control of their own success, the more they pay attention to things that they don't control. Such as how much their race is affecting their success, what privileges they have or don't have, how much luck they have or have not had, the favoritism working for them or against them, the inequities in their favor or against them. These are the things people pay attention to when they don't feel like they can create their own success. So they look for externalities as excuses for the lack of accomplishment. So my conclusion is the better you empower yourself, the less it matters what other people think, do or say. I told you in episode number 1651 how to empower other people. I also told you in episode 1521 how you can empower yourself. In episode 540, how to use empowering language and self-talk. If you have not listened to those episodes, or listen to them so you can empower yourself so you can stop focusing on things which you do not control, like another person's belief about distinct characteristics, abilities, qualities, especially so as to distinguish them as inferior or superior to one another. That's the definition of racism. As you recap today's class, the topic is how I feel about racism. The key word in that definition is belief. All right, it's, all, it's about what you believe another person believes. And the last time I checked, again, if this has changed, somebody can text me and let me know. My number is 305-384-6894. If you can read another person's mind, please train me. I will sign up for your course so you can read other people's minds. The last time I checked, nobody was capable of doing that. Point number two, have I ever been profiled, prejudged, looked at differently due to appearance? Have I ever had anyone show any microaggressions towards me? I'm pretty sure. And I gave you a couple examples that could be microaggressions, but maybe the person didn't even mean it that way. Maybe it's just my perception of taking it that way. And it's the whole point. And what makes this whole thing so slippery is that it's all based on the way that we think another person is thinking based on their actions. And it becomes so slippery that it's pretty much a waste of time. So do I give a damn about any of this? No. You know why I don't give a damn? Because I don't respect microaggressions. I don't respect passive aggression. I respect directness. I respect macroaggressions. I'm not worried about what another person is thinking. All right, because what I'm more concerned about is what they do. I only look at what somebody's actually doing and what they're being direct about. You're being passive about it. I'm not even noticing you. We all have a unique set of circumstances, though. So if you are hypersensitive about some of these things, I'm not mad at you for it. I'm not saying that you're wrong for feeling the way that you feel. I'm just telling you how I feel because shit, you're listening to my show. Point number three. When I think of all of this, are there bad people out there? Sure. In every group. But their thoughts are in my business. 
their beliefs aren't my business. If they happen to be racist, that ain't my business either. If you think white people are better than black people, okay, I'm not going to convince you to change your mind. I'm not going to try to throw you in jail. I'm not going to try to get you canceled. I just know if you come up against me and we're doing the same thing, I'm working on my game, so I'm going to win. That's the only thing I care about. I don't care what race you prefer, what you think of one race or another race, how, how much uh, microaggression you want to show. I don't care about any of that shit. And here's the bottom line. A person who knows that they can make things happen in their own life does not care what other people think about them or what other people have to say about them or what you think other people think about you since you don't actually know what they think. It doesn't matter because your success is going to happen either way regardless of what other people are doing. I found that people who do not feel like they can control their own success spend much time paying attention to things they don't control. Externalities like race, privilege, luck, favoritism, inequities. So my conclusion is the better you can empower yourself, the less it matters what other people are thinking or believing or even what the hell they're doing. And I told you, one of the keys to focus, one of the keys to having more time for you to do what you want to do in your life is stop paying attention to what other people are doing, especially your hallucinations about what they are thinking, which is the very definition of racism. Work? Oh, yeah. Send me a text. Tell me the most valuable thing you got from today's episode, the most valuable insight. What are you going to do differently or how are you going to think differently based on what you heard today? My number, 305-384-6894. Work on your fucking game. Dre all day.